Hi, my name's Fiona Jack. Uh, I'm an artist. I live in Auckland. I would like to talk to you about the Living Halls project, which is on show here at the Gavette Brewster in New Plymouth uh, in 2010. The project started in 2008 and is not complete at the time of this exhibition. It's going to keep going. It's a large and very unruly project. So the project unfolded over time as I kind of discovered things around um, this subject. So primarily the National Archives was the biggest discovery point, which was um, not only realising that there was an enormous um, set of files in the National Archives relating to the building of these halls after World War II, but also then the discovery about these drawings that were deeply embedded in these files. And so my search through six or seven hundred so of these files looking for drawings. And these drawings are amazing because they uh, where someone from a small community has written an, a letter directly to the Minister of Internal Affairs saying, Dear Sir, we would like to build a memorial hall, please find attached a drawing. And there's this tiny little drawing attached, which is often done by a daughter or an uncle or maybe by the person who wrote the letter themselves. And it's this aspirational drawing that um, shows this very amazing kind of vernacular architecture, or aspirational architecture that um, is sent straight to the head of government and then, you know, years later the hall is actually built. I took those drawings and I recreated them in minute detail because those drawings can't be taken out of the National Archives, so it was, um, it's not really my practice, I guess, to photograph a document. I don't find that particularly interesting, so it was much more important to me to spend all the time with the drawings and to replicate them and to choose the right kind of paper and the right kinds of materials to faithfully replicate that drawing as a way of getting close to the subject and the way of honouring the kind of labour and intention of the person who made that drawing in the first place and who uh, their community who built the hall. The honour boards are another part of the project which obviously most war memorial halls have honour boards inside them which um, honour the dead soldiers from World War II and World War I in a lot of cases. So the honour boards that I've made are different to traditional honour boards. Obviously they don't list people, they list halls and instead of an asterisk mask marking a dead soldier, it marks a demolished hall or a hall that is no longer considered a memorial or has moved or changed status in some way. Um, and so the, the, the role of honour boards I've made are different as well to, main, to traditional honour boards. They're not varnished. Um, they have bits of pencil on them and, I, and this is all a way of letting them stay in an unfinished state. To honour the vitality of, of the living memorial idea um, and to honour the idea that these are um, loved and owned and looked after by the people who use them, I invited local artists to come and, or to paint a painting of their hall, to paint a representation. So in a way we're creating a collaborative archive. So instead of me going around the country and photographing halls, which is a sort of pretty cold thing to do in a way, um, to create a document. Instead, we're pe getting people to interpret their own hall, to tell us what it looks like, and to send me a painting that says, this is what my hall looks like. And so we have this amazing collaborative archive that's just this beautiful collection of people's visions of their local hall. It doesn't really um, show you the people. It shows you their artifacts, but it doesn't show you the people. So that will be another show. There are other things that are going to come out of this. I don't know yet what they are, but it's such a big project, and I'm deep. I'm in. I'm in deep. <laughs> so, uh, and I, I, I'm enjoying it immensely. So it will continue, and it will. It will grow. And also, the thing that's so lovely about it is that as it grows, more and more people get involved, and that's just great. It's kind of picking up its own momentum now, and that's that's to me a sign of a really living project. None of my projects. I know what I'm doing when I start. It's always just sort of opening the doors, bringing the research in, looking at what's happening, looking at what is there, and just letting the project start to develop itself. And that's, um, that's what I love doing in terms of making work, is just sort of is burying myself in research and then letting it decide for me where I go, because it always does. <laughs>